The Healthcare Infection Prevention Program at VCU Health strives to decrease the risk of healthcare-associated infections to the irreducible minimum. The way in which our program is able to trend data and benchmark progress against other institutions is by participation in the National Healthcare Safety Network. All network participants are required to apply the same definitions for healthcare-associated infection events in order to ensure valid hospital-to-hospital -hospital comparisons. In this video, we will highlight the definition for a ventilator-associated event. The National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN, is the most widely used healthcare-associated infection tracking system. Facilities use this system to participate in reporting programs for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and to submit state-mandated publicly report reported healthcare-associated data. The database also allows facilities to compare their data to other hospitals of the same size and at a unit level compare data of hospital units of similar size, acuity, and patient population. This table shows the last two years of trended data for infection-related ventilator-associated complications, abbreviated as IVAC Plus, at VCU Health. The blue bars represent raw numbers of IVACs in three-month intervals. The teal line shows the calculated rate, which is the number of IVACs over the number of ventilator days times 1,000. The red line shows the standardized infection ratio calculation, or SIR. The SIR is a calculation that adjusts for various facility and patient level factors that contribute to HAI risk. In HAI data analysis, the SIR compares the actual number of HAIs reported to the number that would be predicted. The predicted number is a calculation by the NHSN network that adjusts for several risk factors that have been found to be significantly associated with differences in infection incidence. In other words, an SIR greater than one indicates that more HAIs were observed than predicted. An SIR less than one indicates that fewer HAIs were observed than predicted. You can see that the SIR for quarter four was 0.67, so less than one, so we had fewer IVACs than predicted. This table shows data specific to the surgical trauma ICU. Looking at the data in this way is helpful to trend against ourselves and other institutions of the same size. You can see the SIR for quarter four was 0.39, so less than one, so we had fewer IVACs than predicted. The current definition for ventilator-associated events was developed by a working group made up of professionals from several organizations. The ventilator-associated event definition is an algorithm based on objective, streamlined, and potentially automatable criteria. The three definition tiers are as follows. Ventilator-associated condition, infection-related ventilator-associated complication, and possible ventilator-associated pneumonia. The algorithm is designed to make use of the electronic medical record to automate event detection. Data indicates that algorithms such as this may identify events that are clinically important and associated with outcomes such as ICU and hospital length of stay and mortality. Research suggests that most facts are due to pneumonia, ARDS, atelectasis, and pulmonary edema. These are significant and preventable conditions. And this is, of course, a surveillance definition designed to capture a snapshot of comparable data. It may not always coincide with clinical diagnosis and treatment of patient conditions. Here is a snapshot overview of the Ventilator Associated Event, or VAE, algorithm. You can see it is designed in a stepwise fashion. A patient must meet criteria for VAC to meet criteria for IVAC and meet IVAC criteria to qualify for PVAP. To meet criteria for VAC, a patient has to meet the following criteria. One, be on event for two days. 2. Be on a stable vent setting for 2 days, looking at the lowest value of FiO2 or PEEP during a calendar day that is maintained for greater than 1 hour. Then they have to have either had an increase in the daily minimum of FiO2 of greater than 20 points over the daily minimum FiO2 sustained for 2 days or more, or an increase in the daily minimum PEEP values of greater than 3 over the daily minimum PEEP sustained for 2 days or more. Here is an example. You can see there was a PEEP of 5 for 2 days and then increased to 8. This meets criteria for VAC. It is important to note that VACs are not included in the reported IVAC numbers. Once a patient meets criteria for a VAC, we move down the algorithm to IVAC. To meet criteria for IVAC, you must meet VAC criteria and have either 1. A temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius or less than 36 degrees Celsius or a white blood cell count of 12,000 or higher or 4,000 or lower. And a new antimicrobial agent must be started and continued for four days or more. Here is an example. 
The patient met criteria for a VAC, then had a fever of greater than 38 on the same day, and vancomycin was begun and continued for four days. Once a patient meets criteria for IVAC, they are reviewed for meeting PVAP. This is a culture-based criterion. They must meet one of the following qualifiers. One, have a positive culture from an endotracheal aspirate, BAL, lung tissue, or protected specimen brush, meeting quantitative thresholds. Or two, purulent respiratory secretions, plus a positive culture from a sputum, endotracheal aspirate, BAL, lung tissue, or protected specimen brush. Or have one of the following positive tests. Organism from pleural fluid, lung histopathology, a diagnostic test for Legionella, or a diagnostic test on respiratory secretions for a viral pathogen. In this example, the patient meets IVAC criteria and has an endotracheal aspirate with moderate Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and the gram stain had many gram-negative rods, many white blood cells, and no squamous epithelial cells. I hope this review helps answer questions about VCU Health Surveillance for Infection-Related Ventilator-Associated Complications. I am the infection preventionist for the surgical trauma ICU. Here's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you so much for your time.